Oh, oh there we go. Hey, guys. Uh, happy Thursday evening. This is Brian, a.k.a. Texas Treasures. And tonight on our live show, we got Scott, a.k.a. Dumpster. Uh, Kevin, the Thrifty Lounge, continue his YouTube tour. And <laughs> we have Clay, uh, a.k.a. Clay Closet, joining us now. <sighs> All right. is, is, is that what it is this week? Is place closet? This week. No. <laughs> no more. How long do you think he'll, he'll keep his? Uh, he'll keep his name. I think two weeks. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> how long he would do that. It would take Not long, long at all. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how's it going, flipping sloth? Any, I'm filming. <laughs> any good sales this week? For who? Uh, flipping sloth. He, he's oh, he's from the UK. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just saw him came in. Hi, Flippy Sloth. Yeah, he follows a lot of us now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he sells out of the boot. The boot. <laughs> yep, he sure does. Well, how's it been going this week, guys? How, I guess we'll start off with sales. How, how are sales? Um, bringing mine up here. It's going all right. It's okay. Yeah, sales were good this week. I uh, sold a couple big items, so I was happy about that. And then the rest of mine were um, Amazon replenishable, so I sell those all week too. So it's very uh, good. What kind of replenishables? Uh, maybe you mentioned that. What do you sell? Like, did it uh, uh, sauces, uh, coffee, uh, oh. bras, and underwear? It just whatever, whatever it is, I sell it. Uh, are, those, are those used? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I know you want those, but uh, I'm not selling those used this week. Yeah, you can sell some old maybe, old maybe next week I'll sell them used. But, yeah, uh, we will see. But yeah, uh, but yeah, that's uh, I do RA at Walmart, uh, uh, Dollar Tree, and also like uh, TJ Maxx and Burlington and stuff like that. So okay, yeah, and and Costco. That's the other one, Costco. Gotcha. What about you, Clay? How, how are your sales going this week? Um, I'm bringing that up. <laughs> so since last week, um, what that would have been, what, the 21st or the 20th, sold this old lantern that I picked up this. Uh, that was in the fall. Brian and I hit this garage sale. They had all this old vintage stuff. And afterwards, we were like, we should have gotten everything they had, basically. Mm -hmm. um, this Dietz lantern bought it for like two bucks sold it for 38 it's going to like japan i think right. um cool. pair, pair of shoes for 38 dollars. that was also from the the ex stepmom box a paintball gun so just a couple things but for me that's about normal three to five a week i'm happy for right now very nice you know not bad, not bad. what about you kevin uh just been selling like my, my regular one, two, three items a day. So it's going good. I, it, it's good to get my sales back up after I got a negative last week. And literally my, my sales were like non-existent for two days. And then I want it. And then all of a sudden, literally 10 minutes later, I got to, I got a sale. And then like an hour later, I got another sale. So when people say, oh, it doesn't really bother you if you get a negative feedback, it's BS. <laughs> it's totally. That's it. That's the piece right there. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Um, I guess I guess for me that I packed quite a few cells. No, no really big cells. It's kind of been that way for the past couple of weeks. Um, a lot of these headbands from the the Nike storage unit. The last one I did. Um, selling quite a bit of shoes. Sold uh, a pair of LL Bean shoes from the bins I got. It's been a while. Uh, they sold for like forty or fifty. I sold some antlers. And, and here's a bolo. Uh, I don't know if you know about this one, Clay. Like deer antlers. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah, I picked some at a garage sale. It's been months since I've been garage selling. And I listed them about a week ago. You know, list, list them by the pounds. They were kind of the smaller ones. I think I paid like two bucks and they sold today, um, I think like 35 plus maybe three bucks shipping. So I could make some money on shipping. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of cool. That's my first um, antler flip. I like any if I if I ever usually around my area that the the, the taxidermy and antler stuff like that is expensive, but if I do find like a good uh you know a nice piece I know it can sell, I'll pick it up and resell it. Nice. And same thing with mounted fish, you know. 
uh, the exotic mountain fit mount, mounted fish go pretty well too. Like I had a hog fish two years ago. I was going to sell it. It was like $250 piece. I kept it for a long time. And then where I had it in my old house, uh, you, someone slammed the door hard. Um, and it fell off the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the nail and smashed the bottom of the fin. So I was like, yep, that's not going to be worth anything now. That sucks. But I do have a barracuda in my, in my bathroom hanging up. Uh, that's mounted. Um, I don't know. I just like the cool, I like the cool, uh, fish and stuff like that. So did you guys get the question? Yeah. 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 Missouri picker ask, how do you research what you are selling? I mean, to find a good selling price. Um, well, I, I guess I, I'll take that one first because I actually made a video this week on, um, on, on, you know, how to price your items. That was for Poshmark. <laughs> but, really, but really, it applies to anything, right? eBay, any of the platforms, pretty much. Um, Missouri Picker, you're going to look at, you're going to go, you're going to look at the, the souls, right? The comps. Perfect. Uh, well, if one of y'all want to answer that, I'm going to try to figure out the screen share. Maybe we can just show you. Yeah, so for me, I've just learned, like Brian and I think the other guys will say that, like, if I go to a garage sale and let's say I, I look at something like this, if there's a brand on it, something right, you would try, or a style number, I go to eBay. I type in whatever item it is. Hey, Clay. Huh. You may want to back up from the mic because I think you're gonna you're killing some people's ears. Okay. Uh, yeah, because because I'm get, we're getting a bunch of feedback saying you're pretty loud. Uh, okay. It's probably you may want to set that camera up correctly after just do some YouTube. Uh, for some reason, it's the same camera as um, of, uh, Brian's, right? Yeah. So you should be coming out like him. Hmm. But it's fine. Keep talking. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll also talk quieter. I'm just loud. Dude, that's perfect. So you just find, like I say, if there's a, if you can find the item or a similar item in YouTube, and then you go to uh, the, I'll try to show you here. Yeah, I'm sure you know this, Missouri, but you would go to like the, um, the filter and you would click on solds. And that also clicks then completed. Um, you look at how many also go up to condition and a lot of things, obviously, you, you know, if it's a garage sale will be used. So you would click used. So you see how many things are for sale and how many have sold. And then you can just scroll and be like, oh, it's they want $10 for this pair of shoes, but they're only selling for 13. That's not a good deal. Yeah, here, here are mine. Do y'all see those screen shares that are coming up? No. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Click the application screen share button and then click on it again. You should be able to pop that thing up. All right, let's see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, well, when I click it, it so says your entire screen. You said the application window? What do you mean? Yeah, the application window. And then click it, and then you should be able to do a screen share from there. Okay. All right. All right. Ooh. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay. Yep. Well, let me just show you what Clay was talking about. Um, so, for example, you're outsourcing, right? And, and obviously, you can do this on your phone. Um, let's say you find a pair of LL Bean shoes. I love my shoes. So, you just, just type it in, hit the search button. And depending on the condition, assume they're used. Just used and you can see there's what 5907 5907 available and they come well those are the sold so there's 7073 available right but you want to know how many have sold and, and you you would want to put in more information depending on the type of to narrow it down like if if they were um boots or whatever whatever and then once you click the sold button you can see almost 6,000 have sold, 7,000 are available. So first of all, that's gonna tell you that, that you have a really good sell through rate, that these shoes are gonna sell fast. And then you're just gonna find the model that you have and um, 
and, and then you're going to sort it. Like I'm going to sort, I always like to start off with highs first, you know, or ended most recently. And you're just looking for comps, right? You're looking for several that have sold like you. And that will give you an idea of what the market currently is. So that, that, that's basically it. Another way is Terapeak. Terapeak helps me out a lot. Uh, there's another another thing called Completely. It's kind of like Terapeak. Uh, there's a few apps out there. I, I do it around the same thing um, to get my sell through rate. Uh, but mostly I'll do Terapeak if I want to know really a sell through rate. But if I'm in the store, I'll look like you did up look up look up uh, similars, look go from highest, try cut down what I want, um, and then go from there. Hey Kevin, tell them the difference. And Terapeak is actually a better way to go. Up. To do it, tell them the difference between Terapeak and eBay. How, how what the difference is on. I'll show you right now. Let me uh, screen share it for you guys. All right. And you know, re research is the key to anything. You know. Come on. And right while he's pulling up Terapeak, um, it comes like if you get the eBay certain level of your subscription, part of your eBay package. So it's another reason to get the to get that. What is it? The I, I think the five hundred listing package. Yeah, the basic. Yeah, the basic. Yeah, the e eBay stores. There's a lot of benefits to that. You get you get a credit on shipping. All right. Stuff. So over here, you can go back a year. 90 days, 30 days, seven days. But for like a rare item that you think you don't think you find a lot of, uh, I usually go back in a year, right? Because I want to see how many I could find. So uh, let's see. I think there's an E somewhere in here. Maybe that's it. Let's see. Nope. Is it this one? Yes. I'm done. <laughs> CP Gores, let's try. Uh, okay, here we go. And you can always pop it up by advanced filters, new use for. So what I usually like to do, I do this fixed price, store fixed. I do not touch auction. Mm -hmm. I, I, I give, I'll give you a tip: unclick auction because that's not going to give you exact value of the amount that's going to be true. Uh, true market value is never going to be auctioned because a lot of people do $10 auctions, $12 auctions, and then they're not popular <laughs> on eBay and they don't sell it. Um, so for me, here's, there's only one of this one out there, I guess. Uh, Sleepy Gore is one for $99. And then also you can go to unsold, un, unsold listings, the trends. See, it gives you trends, tells you the sellers, inventory ideas. The inventory ideas, and then single prediction, which I don't know what yeah, that is. I've never used it, but for the most part, that's what I'll use a lot of times. If I'm at home on a desk on a on a laptop, I'll use that um, over doing comps on eBay because it's going to give me past ninety days. Yeah, and that's good, especially when you get to the more rare item, um, vintage items. That there, there's not a lot of them out there, but year versus the ninety days gives you more data. Yeah. Uh, do any of you guys use Earth Point? I yeah. I used to, man, but I'm not, I don't feel like I don't feel I don't know. It's just for me, what I do, it's not enough value for what I do. Uh, right. Therapy is going to have everything for me, anyways, for the past year. Um, with the, uh, the the with where I can break it down for certain ways. I used to have it like six, seven years ago. This guy Jason T. Smith used to push it hard, mm -hmm. um, but since he's really stopped being anywhere, uh, it really hasn't gone anywhere. So, I mean, a lot of people use it still, but Terapeak, completely, that stuff, you know, the, if you have a store, that's free, basically, and completely, I pre I'm pretty sure it's free also. That's one that, that uh, uh, Ben Flipping Goods, Wes Whedon, um, he, uh, he showed us on the reseller reunion last week. I never even heard of, but it comes up quick, too. It's a fast, really fast search. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to all, the, all these guys, make sure you subscribe. Um, that was a good show. Y'all had the, the reseller reunion. Yeah. Uh, really good stuff. So check out the thrifting lounge um, if you haven't already. And and Scott last night had a good – that was the first time I've been on his live, watched his live, the 
the diving lab. That was that was good stuff too. Yeah, I love hop. I think we all love hopping on there. It's fun. Yeah, he goes down the line, shuts everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Missouri Picker. Question number two. Years ago, I sold stuff on eBay. Is this the best platform to sell on, or is it better to list on multiple platforms? Ooh, good question. It depends on how much time you have in the day. Yeah. Uh, For me, I do it part time, so I can stick just with eBay and Macari. And, um, and it depends on what you're selling, of course. Yes, oh, definitely. Click on the soft answer. They. That's also a good answer, I think. First, sell it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure hustlers, shout out. Uh, Thrift hunters, yes, that's how we all. Uh, I knew Jason before that. Um, I used to be part of his group, thrifting with the boys. Uh, but yeah, thrift hunters back in the day. I think he went for like two seasons. Uh, he sells a lot of tiki mugs, mm -hmm. CDs, and uh, Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. Uh, Missouri picker. To get back to your question real quick, uh, from my point of view, uh, and, and, and Kevin's right, but. From my point of view, this is what it comes down to. The the more platforms you list on, it's just going to speed up your sell through rate. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but there there is a there is a point where it, it causes problems, at least for me, because um, I think like Sloth says right here, when it sells, you got to take it down off the other platforms, or you know you can have the same item sell on multiple platforms, and then you're got a problem. And if that ever does happen, I'll always ship out the eBay. <laughs> Always ship out the eBay first. Poshmark, Mercari, the other sites are way more forgiving mm -hmm. uh, about those defects, which brings up a good topic. I, I wanted to talk to y'all about this and, and see what y'all think. So this week I actually had that issue. <clears throat> I sold a pair of jeans, and these were some big jeans, 46 by 30. I think they were from the, the unit we did, Clay. Okay. Um, and they sold for, for pretty good money, 25, 30 bucks plus shipping, and I couldn't find them. Um, Oh yeah, and I, I looked on my other platforms where I normally cross list, and they weren't there. So e there's either two things that happen, and both are bad. Either my inventory was really off, and I put it in a bin, and I searched through about ten, twelve of them, I couldn't find it, or maybe I sold it previously, and I just don't remember it on another yeah. platform, and forgot to take it off to eBay. So in that situation, you don't <laughs> you don't want that on eBay because that counts as a defect. And too many defects will hurt your account. You know, they'll, they'll charge you higher fees. Like I got top rated sellers. So if I have more than three defect, defects, then I could lose that status. So what I did, um, I mean, Levi's are pretty common. So I searched on eBay. I found another pair, the same, same brand, the same size. And I purchased them, changed the address and shipped them to my customer. Basically, I drop shipped it. Now, the thing is, the jeans I purchased cost more than what I sold. So I lost about $10 on it. But with eBay, you got to think about the long term. Um, and it's better for me to lose $10 to not have that defect versus, you know, making, you know, just totally canceling it sell. Have you guys ever had an experience like that? Uh, yeah, I have an experience on that. I, <laughs> I had to drop ship something from Amazon onto eBay once. And uh, I did that. I, I lost probably about the same as you did. I, I took the ten dollar, fifteen dollar loss just to make the customer happy and drop shipped it from Amazon and sent it to them. So it was a learning lesson for sure. <laughs> That's it's it's not something I do often, but it hurts when you do. So yeah, definitely. I actually just got a list and taken down today uh, because of. Uh, I, I I told I should have been ahead of this. I know everyone's taking their eBay's hard at taking down a lot of Kobe Bryant stuff right now because of the memorial. A mm -hmm. lot of scam artists were buying, uh, get, keeping stuff at the memorial and reselling it from the memorial the other day. And I should have already changed the keyword. But what I did is um, on Kobe Bryant, one of his rookie cards. Oh, nice. I have a $40 off from one of my Brioni ties. Nice. I'm going to decline it though. <laughs> I want like 60, 70 <laughs> bucks for it. That's one, that I, that's one I actually bought on Macari for 10 bucks to reflip. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, so in the title, it says RIP, like rest in peace. Yeah. So, I'm pretty sure that's why I took it down. I have a couple of the Kobe Bryant rookie cards on here that are still up there. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I followed up that they took that down. Does anybody know? Like, I, I haven't really read up on it. 
I know it's kind of controversial, though, you know, talk about. Um, did they say why they decided to take it down? No, they just said it was, uh, yeah, they did the memorial. That's what they said it was. And even though it, it's a freaking card, it has nothing to do with the memorial. It was never at the memorial a few days ago. Uh, yeah, so I was like, whatever. It's I'll uh, I'll have to change the title. Right. So what they do is when they take it down, they delete your whole list in. So you got to go restart the whole list in over again. Doesn't even give you a chance to sell similar or relist. That sucks. Not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, baseball cards are super quick to to list, anyways. Yeah. All right. Um. I we well. I guess we can we can answer this question from Missouri Pickers. Got all the questions. Um. Number three, shipping. How are you figuring shipping? Are you weighing it? Asking for zip codes. I mean, I don't want to have to go out and buy the scale. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Um. Yeah. You're gonna have to get a scale. <laughs> yeah. A, a scale. A scale on Amazon's ten fifteen bucks. Yeah. Uh, save you a lot more money in the long run just weigh it and then know what you're doing um, unless you're going to ship everything priority uh you could just ship it at a flat rate but uh if you're going to do first class uh you're going to want to weigh it. i'll save you uh the money and just a couple of listings if, uh, yeah so it's, it's and then also if you're going to ship big items on fedex or ups uh, you're going to also want to know the exact way of that or they'll ding you so yeah, it's funny. Um, I was listening to Pure Hustle podcast. They, they have a really good YouTube channel and podcast, and they were talking about this. And, and this is true from my perspective. You'll come across um, scales at garage sales, thrift stores for you know a couple a buck, two bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but in my case, I just bought one because you definitely need the scale, and you definitely need to use PirateShip.com also because you can actually make money on shipping. I average a few bucks profit for shipping because uh, on cubic shipping. Yeah, you want to talk about that a little bit, Scott? Yeah, cubic shipping is awesome on Pirate Ship, and then also uh, uh, you'll have to sign up for an account, and and you can link your eBay store. I don't know about your Poshmark store, but I know you could link your eBay store directly in the uh, Pirate Ship. It'll pull it up, and you can buy the shipping right there. Super easy. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys ship international, but there's also an option. Oh, yes. Uh, international shipping, you can make a couple bucks that way, too. Um, I, I, I shipped something to uh, New Zealand. A GoPro, actually, I, I, I shipped it and saved probably $10 just shipping on uh, pirate ship, not using a global shipping program. So. Wait, wait, which, which GoPro was that, Scott? That was the old five. Oh, the, okay. uh, I, just five one this week. I was like, dang, I should have went yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, it's the old one. Now that me and Kevin upgraded to the black eight, I, I wouldn't recommend anything less. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got. I got the eight on eBay. Yeah. And I had all the accessories. The, the, the seven is a close second and 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 uh, definitely worth the money. Uh, but uh, the eights with the st stabilization is, is totally worth it. So. But yeah, uh, definitely uh, weigh out your stuff and then uh, link your your eBay shipping to uh, the pirate ship. It'll save you money. And sometimes if you have per, uh, uh, top rated seller, it'll be really close too. Um, but not everybody has top rated sellers. So yeah, I, I would say thirty percent of my business is from international sales. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just use pirate ship. I don't even bother with eBay, eBay a while ago. There was some glitch with my old account for some reason, or my account for some reason saying I couldn't buy labels. So that's uh -huh. when I, one day I just Googled, like, uh, I even put, actually put it in my Facebook group. Uh, you know, Hey, what's the, what do you guys use for shipping besides eBay? And someone said pirate ship went on there. It yep. is so super simple. It, it is, is so awesome. much better than eBay shipping. And it's actually some, a lot of the top parts is cheaper than eBay shipping. Um, um, I have no clue how they do it, but they do it. And also the insurance on yeah. there is super easy. If you need insurance on an item, and I suggest if you do international sales, anything over a hundred bucks, pop on that, click that little link because, uh, you, there will be times where sometimes people won't receive that item. Right. And then, um, uh, flipping saw, uh, sloth, he has a good tip right here about, uh, you can always look up the weight on, uh, Amazon, but it's not always correct. It's close. Uh, but, uh, people, you gotta remember with Amazon, everybody's, uh, everybody in the mom, even including me 
could create a listing on there and sometimes the weight isn't right. So, but it is a good, a good start to do that. So yeah, good to, um, I, I, got, I got to go guys. Um, but I did want to uh, share my sales uh, from eBay and Amazon here. I got three of them. If I could do that real quick. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, of course, man. Oh, someone's asking, by the way, it is uh, not, it is pirate ship. Yes. Pirate ship. Yep. I think it's .com, but as soon as I you type so. in pirate ship, you'll see it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that pops up. Um, I'm in the show. I know that. Okay. And let's go there. Okay. Okay. This is the uh, some ink that I, I uh, pulled up uh, from Staples for free. And I've sold about six hundred and fifty dollars worth of ink so far. So for one hundred and ten dollars, I gladly took this guy's offer. <laughs> he hasn't paid, but he will because he's bought from me before. Uh, it must be some some company or something. But uh, yeah, this is uh, free ink into one hundred and ten dollars. Uh, these Sonic uh, toothbrushes are. Oh yeah, uh, the Sonic ones are nice. Yeah, the, the $126. I got these RA at Costco. Uh, they were clearancing these out. So I had three of them. As you can see, I sold all three for $126. I ran them for $50 and they paid shipping on top of that. Nice. And then Amazon. This is my Amazon for $71. Well, $66.13 with tax. Uh, National Geographic uh, for $66. I bought got for a dime at the Benz. Uh, hmm. October. Wow. September, October 16th, I'll pull up the listing here. But uh, this is the listing now. There's one on there for 50 bucks. But uh, that's what the, made that thing so special. I, I don't even know. I scanned it, see everything has a barcode, and you can just scan the picture or the um, or the uh, barcode, and it pulled it up for that, and I sold it. So, damn, that is so. Sick. We, there is also one that was sold on eBay. Um, so I was, I was looking at that one, but, uh, let's see, I, I could, I didn't find that one. So, um, but it, it was 110, somebody sold one for on eBay. So make sure you're looking at your national geographics, uh, $66 from 10 cents is not bad. I'll take that all day long. So yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Uh, Sarah and Jackie. Yeah. Love retail arbitrage. A lot of new stuff sells on, Am on eBay. If you can't sell it on Amazon. Uh, always look it up on eBay because you can definitely sell it on there. So, so there you go. I was I was gate I gated in Phillips on Amazon, so that's why I sold it on eBay. So because it was selling about 150 on on uh, on Amazon, so <laughs> I would made a little bit more money. But uh, you know, I, I picked up three of them three months ago, cleared them out and uh, scanned them and scanned them with the eBay app because you could do the barcode on that and it pulled up brand new with that. So. I'll take it. So, anyways, I want to leave you with that, guys. I'll be in the chat. So, uh, but I got to take my daughter to gymnastics. Good luck. Yeah, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, uh, what was this a comment I was looking at from Treasure House? Sorry, what I'm doing when I look down, I'm looking on my mobile, and because I'm, just, I have to come all the way up here and click out to the, my windows. So I'm looking at, I'm trying to get into the uh, the chat again because they said something. I have to come all the way up here and click out to the. Ooh, that's me. Well, let's while, while Kevin's checking out that, I guess, um, like what I want to start doing, because uh, Clay, Clay and I, we, we talk a lot about goals and listings and more even than the souls. To me, it's all about getting the listings up. So I think last week I was like at 505. Um, so I'm going to share. I guess you can see this. I've got 537 listings. So I got about 32 up this <laughs> week. I came a little bit short of my 50. Um, but, you know, that's my goal is to get at least 50 up a week. Do you guys have – well, yeah, we talked about that last week. Um, Clay, did you set any goals listing-wise or any other goals? I'm Listen. just trying to – like I still said last week, kind of do the baby steps of <coughs> something every day. So it's like the other day I went and rented the storage unit, right, you know, put some shelves in there. I listed a couple things. Might be hard to see, but – yeah, can't see it, but I'm at 169. I had gotten to like 172, but a couple things sold. Um, so this weekend, 
that death pile, hopefully I can still shrink it more and get, if I can do just decent work, a few hours, I can get it over 200 in, you know, over the weekend. The goal is by the end of the school year, 12 weeks or 13 weeks, including spring break. <coughs> Sorry. You getting a cold? Oh, I've had it for like two months. I don't uh, sleep um, stupidly. So I'm trying to get to 300 by the time school's over. I think that's plenty doable with all the Oh, dude, definitely. With clothes and shoes I have at home, um, you know. Hey, entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, are you? That's my that's my Tracy. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tracy. Oh, show, yeah. Right? Tracy. Yeah, she's got like 3 million views, uh, like 100,000 subscribers. She kills it, dude. She's awesome. Yeah, she was the middle square on the bottom or something. Yeah, yeah she's awesome. She's amazing. We're going to. Uh, hit me up still, Tracy. Are you going to be on? I know James just announced he's not going to be on probably in the next few weeks because of his, uh, the stuff's going on with him. But are you going to be on next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern uh, for the resale reunion? Let me know in the chat or anything. Anyway, sorry, Clay. No. Uh, so I'm just trying to get, like, I, I think I can go over 300. Once I get the death pile done, and source and list, you know, if it's 10 things, get it done in a few days. Um, I'd like to, if I could be 400. <coughs> Just keep so. setting like weekly goals, monthly goals, and every six month goals because six month goals is a big thing too, especially for yeah. me. That's what I do, six month goals. Yeah. I'm trying to work on the goals, dude. I'm not, yeah, that's just never been my brain for anything really. I just like, even if I was training for a marathon, I might have a time in my head. And so I guess that's a goal, but I just would like go train, not the best training, but I just believed I could do it. And, and I went and ran the race and got better at it because I just thought that was the number, you know, yeah. so I guess it's a goal. I just don't always set the steps, you know, like, well, to get the six months, what do I do need to do each month? You know? So that's, so that's a goal I need to have is setting goals. Yeah. Small goals. Well, uh, Maggie did set a goal. Set some goals. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I put out a little video on that this week. Um, and to me, like, and I don't know, and I've talked, Kevin, I talk a lot about Chris Daly refinement. Like, like that's, that's his niche right there, the goals, the planning. And when I watch him, it really kind of gets my mind focused because he's, he's big about, you know, your big goal, then breaking it up into smaller goals. Um, things that that you can accomplish in, in little daily goals. So. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's the thing I love about him. He's probably my when it comes to a technical YouTuber, he is he would be my favorite technical YouTuber um, because he is he'll he's great at uh, getting you motivated and also goals. Like in his groups, he has you know stuff forms on uh, some like goals that he has. Like he has like. How should I put it? He has these certain challenges and he'll put them in his group. Uh, what's that called? The file section. Yeah. And then it's just there. You can always print them out and just go as you uh, uh, use it as you go. You don't always have to just go about on him because that could be from six months or a year ago. You may not be doing the same thing, but that still works for, for like now. And it works for anybody. So that's good. Trace uh, for a girl says goal seven. Yep. It's the only way to make it happen. What type, what type of goals do you set, um, entrepreneur girl? Like, what, what goals are you currently working on? Or anybody in the chat, let us know. Uh, comment below what, what, what goals are you guys currently working on? I think one of her goals was getting her YouTube channel back up. I remember she, I think she was posting that up yesterday uh, that she wants to get that going too. So um, it's hard for us to get to try to, to revive a dead channel because it's like a lifeline. Uh, especially from YouTube, but you can. How's that going for you, Kevin? It's going great. Uh, my growth has been in the last twenty-eight days, three hundred sixty subscribers, and the prior twenty-eight days I only had forty subscribers. So it's it's going pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to see. I'm very analytical, so I look in the YouTube studio, and I'm starting to see some of my newer videos, like my yard sale one, starting to show up on like Harry Tornado suggested uh, videos mm -hmm. and Steve Rakin suggested videos. So. Um, I need to be, I probably need to go back and then further in my newer ones and try to mess with the SEO on that too. Uh, but this, these newer one, this, this, the last two newer ones are, are catching up and then also it helps with the lives. The lives people keep looking at those and pumping those things out. Um, 
the lies put in a lot of watch time on exactly the watch time on that so it, and it has a lot of content though too so uh that's that's what's really good about that one yeah and especially if you got that playlist and i know y'all were talking about that was clay you get the playlist well obviously the lives will be in there that's somebody yeah. So the, the the thing with about a playlist is you can you can make as many playlists as you want, but you can only have one playlist that is SEO'd, search opt, uh, search engine uh, optimized. Exactly. So there's a section on there, and you could YouTube it. It's one of the big guys, Nick Nimmin, one of them. I think they show you how to do it. Actually, I think it was from him how I should uh, I learned how to do it. You got to go into like the playlist settings, and then there's a setting in there. It says, "Do you want to?" Uh, I something about like making it like optimized or your main or it's like your main playlist which you want so you put your videos in there and then the video playlist will actually be search optimized so it'll bring over more views to you too nice um yeah i know it's talking about goals like youtube i'm you know I'm just kind of getting serious about it and we, we were talking earlier like my first mini goal is to hit 500 subscribers so i get my affiliate links back and then eventually hit that thousand. Like my goal is um, by the end of June, I, I want to be monetized. So get that 1,000 subs in 4,000 hours. Yeah. So I, uh, I think, yeah, go ahead. That six hour video I ganged, I think it was like three or 400 hours already from that one video. Jeez. Dang. We had a lot of viewers and then I kept it on there for six hours. Yeah. You Makes know. sense that like the few videos I've made, I tried to make them seven or eight minutes because I know that some of the algorithms or something, you know, and it's like, I guess for YouTube, I'm at 52 or 53. And that's all basically since we start, I only started the channel right before Brian and I started this yeah. the live deal five weeks ago or what, just four. So I'm like, I'll take that I'm at 53, you know, and I told y'all guys, I, edited i made that little trailer you know put it on my channel to advertise i went back to my last video which it's only got like 28 views but for me that's that's a lot and i'm not going to post but i added some sound effects last night you know and different things so the goal is just to keep work for that you know the youtube just learning to edit you know speaking about editing dude my girlfriend uh we use iMovie like i was telling you earlier yeah. and it says the space that there's not enough space to add the music right now because there's too much space, even though she deleted most of the stuff before. So I guess some way or another, she by accidentally deleted the whole video. She just tried to, she was, we were going to upload tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, delete the whole thing. Ouch. Yeah. So well, she's, uh, way, um, Scott, I guess Scott's in the chat now. He just dumps her to her dad. Yeah. hundred hours. So y'all make sure y'all help him, you know, Roll some of his videos, some playlists, and let's get him. Let's oh, get him. I do it every day. I roll his playlist because he's so close to getting that 4,000. So help him out, guys. All right. Um, so we, we, we talked so – well, I guess we – let me see. Missouri Pickers have another question. To sell on eBay or Amazon, do you need a reseller's license? I don't know. I don't yeah. see him on. Yeah, I don't think so. From I mean, from what I understand, um, a reseller's license is like through Texas, the way where we're at. It's for reporting taxes, and some you know some places uh, require you to have one, I guess, to sell there. But you know, you, you don't need one to sell on eBay, and I, and I have and, or Amazon. I've I've sold on both without one, so I I don't think so. And now with eBay and these platforms collecting sales tax, uh, I think that's even less of an issue. All right. Um, so yeah, so I guess going back to the sales, uh, I like to do that weekly Bogo Buzz, uh, best sell of the week. What you guys got for the week? Uh, uh, I think it was another one of those lenses I sold last week. I think it was like a hundred and thirty dollars. Um, let's see. You can go have a clay, and I'll look for mine. I sold. I guess my best. They're all about the same. I sold a paintball gun, like as like after the show, maybe last week, forty one dollars. <throat> Pair of women's Prada shoes, thirty eight, and that lantern for thirty eight. 
So those are my three sales I sold this. The best was right as we went live. I think I mentioned last week a pair of two hundred dollars Chanel women's shoes that I got from the ex stepmom. Um, <laughs> so this week it was all three three things thirty eight to forty one. You know that's that's solid right there, man. Yeah, that's better than ten fifteen. Yeah, and the paint one gun was five. Brian was with me when I got that at that day we had it way out north. I the walked shoes, right by. The shoes were free and two dollars for the lantern. So can't go wrong, man. I made money on pirate ship, even though the the paintball gun I made only like a buck. It's going to I don't know, somewhere overseas. I can't remember. Three of the th five things I mailed the other day were going overseas. So it's like I still made like the lantern, they paid seventy dollars. I think I made a buck or two. Um on the shipping, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. This uh kind of an old school looking rotary phone, but it's you know, push button. I sold it for 47. The shipping to go to Germany was 78. And I think right. I made seven dollars off of that. You know, so yeah, pirate ship is just huge. Gotta so, use people. So today's kind of turned into a good day. Remember, I just said that guy retracted like uh he wanted forty dollars on that Brioni. He retracted his bid, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. He retracted it, move on. I looked down like because you guys were talking about the the, the bull items. He actually just paid full price for it, seventy seven dollars plus the three dollars in shipping. That's weird. Nice. He yeah. didn't give me time. I think probably because he's probably like me. I'm a at the time. I'm the buyer. Is like, I'd rather do a buy it now. I, I don't like to wait to hear back from somebody else to um because sometimes people won't even get back to you. I've been, I've seen it where I'll like I'll set our best offer and they won't even write me back for like a day. Then I'm like forget it, whatever. I'm just gonna pay for full price for it. Really? Um, and that's not good customer service always get right back to somebody when they're offering you a best best offer you know because then that's where your starting point is and uh some of these people and, and it goes with them they're like oh well, you know i don't know why i don't sell much you don't sell much maybe because you're not getting back so quickly with the customer service you know um doing doing your best uh your um uh your best offer back you know but that's a good sale right there i'll, I'll give that one as my sale of the week so far 77 dollar brioni tie nice do you remember yeah. what you paid for it? Another one that I flipped from Macari for ten dollars. So I bought five of those for ten dollars a piece, and then one of the five was twelve. Um, and then this one I just flipped for seventy-seven. The other one I flipped for I think eighty or eighty-five about two weeks ago. So I literally made triple my money already on two of the five ties. And again, those are Brioni's. So those are the cream of the crop. Uh, the uh, when it comes to fashion, men's fashion clothes. All right, there's a bolo, something to look out for, guys. Yeah, uh, here I'll, I'll, I guess I'll show share mine. It, it just uh, uh so. entrepreneur girl, you know, mine's fa my favorite tea bay by far. That's my bread and butter. And I think she had an answer to the Amazon earlier about the Amazon um seller stuff, the certificate. Yeah, she did. Uh, let me show this real quick. Um, yeah. These actually sold today. These were from the, the Goodwill bins for LL Bean lace up shoes. Sold for 48 plus. Click them up so we can see them better. The, uh, oh, yeah. I want to see what those look like. All right. Yeah, here we go. Oh, those are nice. Yeah, and these are at the bins. I mean, they were clean. I'm surprised uh, no one grabbed those. I mean, you know, the bins are usually face first in those bins grabbing shoes. I tell you what, though, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but. Um, like, like on ours, uh, the one we go to and <laughs> close to where Clay and I are, I've been there three or four times and yeah. I've only seen like one or two other people doing shoes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I hope it stays that way. Cause shoe, shoes are my thing. Yeah. Uh, I went alone. I went with him twice. And then the first time I went alone, I just did like what he and I did. I just grabbed not every shoe. Cause he had taught me, you know, already that, so, you know, the whole deal, some shoes that are good to buy aren't good to resell. But I just, if I didn't know it, I just grabbed everything and I filled a whole cart with like a mountain. When he and I go to yeah. each fill and we start at different ends and we cross, then we go back a second time, then we get a third cart, try to match them up, and then, we pick them up and then we just pay and split it and then we do a draft later. We kind of look up some, but like, yeah, the one he's going to go to tomorrow is like, I That's don't know. Awesome. It, is, it is weird. 
<laughs> my, so where I live at the bins, we have a lot of Dominicans, and they literally, as soon as they say go, they literally go like this. Wow. And they like they have they have groups, so like they're uh -huh. it's so hard to get. You got to literally elbow them. Like I've done it a few times where like they try to go to my area and I'll elbow them out a little bit because you have to. If not, they're gonna cut in front of you and they're gonna grab all that stuff that you're looking for. And they'll do that. They'll grab the stuff, put it in the cart, and then they'll put it away. And then they'll look over it and then they'll throw the other stuff they don't need back. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like you're literally invading my space. Don't touch my space. I know exactly what you're doing. And I'm mm -hmm. not, you're not going to push me around. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's how it, I'm sure you guys have been into that too. It, well, I mean, they, they get a little aggressive out here, but, but not nearly that level. Like, um, yeah, we haven't, I haven't experienced anything nearly that bad. Like I heard a lot of horror stories like that. And so I didn't go for a long time. And I was like, you know, let me just go check it out. And I was like, well, I mean, it's kind of gross. You need your hand sanitizer or whatnot, but. Um, as far as the aggressiveness, it wasn't too bad. Now, when they bring out the new row of bins, yeah, now that, you know, it, it's it's a little crazy when the new bins come out. Bill Stoner says, Kevin, they grab all the shoes, don't they? Yes, they do. And what they do is they send it back over to the Dominican Republic, and they have stores down there, and they make money off them. Like even the ugliest, worst condition shoes, they'll grab those things and send them back to the Dominican Republic to sell. Uh, I think that's what uh, Hearts Picker has, too. I think he has um, – a store down in the Dominican still where he, he does, he, he sends a lot of his stuff down there. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Huh. Um, all right. And you mentioned entrepreneur girl answer the question. Yeah. And I, I forgot that it's, it's the tax. Like if you have the reseller's license, when you buy inventory, you don't have to pay the sales tax, but you do have to report it on the other end when you sell it. And she also had a good question. What's everyone's favorite platform? Poshmark, eBay, or Amazon. Um, what about you, Clay? Start with you. What's your favorite platform to sell? On? Or any others, I guess. Well, as I said, I like eBay, <laughs> mostly because I'm not really on Poshmark yet, but I've also had some decent luck lately uh, on Facebook Marketplace with a couple of bigger items, and then it's just good for cash. So, like, I have a printer that um, should have sold, but the guy was a jerk about paying uh on ebay so i'm good to ship it out because it's you know boxed up in the original box but i put it on facebook because if i can sell it that's you know another few hundred just to me all i gotta do is meet them someplace so i'm, I'm liking the facebook marketplace a lot too yeah and don't get me wrong i've kind of gone back to my roots with craigslist you know uh doing it that way Okay. Uh, I'll go, I'll just do some research and f I feel like you get better deals on Craigslist than Facebook marketplace in my area. Uh, I feel like I have a lot, there's a lot of resellers in my area to compete with. And when it comes to Facebook marketplace, I'll do the research and it's like, ah, I'm not making no profit. They know exactly what they're doing. So when I go on a Craigslist, there's a couple sellers I see on there where I can just go in and then make offers and go and pick the stuff up. And then when I'm at their house, I'm able to see what else they're selling. Uh, you know, kind of like a little pick and garage sale, but you know, from Craigslist and then go over there, you know? Hey, what's up? Chris is in the chat from uh, Las Vegas. I mean, sorry, uh, Sonny, Las Vegas thrifts. What's up, buddy? He'll be back Sunday. Can't wait for him to come back. He's in Texas <coughs> right now. He's in your, uh, your guys' area, Texas. Yeah. I looked up the, the, the town. It's maybe an hour from San Antonio. Yeah. Charlotte, Texas. And he, we were messaging on Facebook. I, we friended each other and, it is like a teeny little like town like the yep. on the aerial view it looked like you know a few blocks yeah i think that's what he's saying too is a really small town and he gets like no service out there yeah yeah um dude you know we need to get like entrepreneur girl or bill stoner on here sometime yeah and i mean yeah, they're, they, they're great to you know, as well yeah yeah, Bill. Yeah, entrepreneur, whoever. And Sonny. Yeah, anybody else. Uh, Here, guys. If, if y'all like to join us next Thursday, um, just leave a comment below, and uh, we'll yeah. get in contact with you, bring some, bring some people on. Oh, and, and kind of. Well, I guess let me answer that question. My, my favorite. Gosh, I don't know. It's it's tough. Like, e eBay's amazing. Um, I, I I do better on Poshmark right now. I guess because I sell so many shoes, and honestly, shoes sell better for me on Poshmark than eBay. But I, I've done pretty well on Mercari. Actually, in this one, a lot of people don't talk about the offer up. 
like I kill an offer up. I'm not currently selling on there because I don't want to get too many platforms. Um, I am using list perfectly to cross list. So once they get offer up as a, a cross listing platform, I'll, I'll probably start using them again. There seems like offer up is kind of growing and it's flying under the radar compared to some of the other ones. Uh, all in one of my buddies that I, that I talked to privately a lot. Uh, he has a question. I'm going to have him write it in the chat though. Uh, okay. he, I think he asked it earlier and maybe we skipped it. Um, but I'll ask him, uh, Alton, if you're, if you're listening, obviously you are write it in the chat again so we can see it. Uh, he's actually going to be picking up. He's at the, I think he's researching the mic. Cause I, I tell him because he's, he's like you guys new at the, the YouTube, you know, and, and the thing I like to do is make people get uncomfortable and get on the camera and just yeah. give it a shot. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I've been talking back and forth to him. Just telling him like, dude, you got to get on a live, get on a live, man. You get your mic and, and your video and I'll put you on a live. We'll hang out. Uh, so he's in the middle of trying to, he came across the same package that I have, the 922 C922 Logitech and the blue um, microphone pro uh, Yeti. So I'm like, he's like, is it worth it? I'm like, dude, it's definitely worth it. I it's, it's easy to plug and play and that's it. You plug it in. And you let it go. You, it's not like where you have to tinker with it and stuff like that, especially the Yeti. Yeah, I, I need to get a standalone mic. I, I have a, a lavalier, but and that works fine when I'm on YouTube directly, but through StreamYard when I plug it in, yeah, and I have my audio. So I, I need to get one of those. Well, your audio's your audio's coming in great. I think it's coming in amazing. Uh, I think it's even coming in better than Dumpster Diver Dad's. Okay. Uh, it could be because you have, you're, you're behind, like right behind you, you're, you're literally behind a wall. So maybe the acoustics is better. I heard if to make acoustics better, throw a bunch of pillows on the floor mm. and put some blankets on the wall to keep the sound from echoing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I see, I see Bill Stoner. Um, yeah, we'll get you on next Thursday, Bill. So we'll, we'll yeah, go. Bill, yeah. you could, you could hang out and watch and, and just drool over Bill's death pile behind him. <laughs> yeah, Clay, Clay might come stalking for that death pile. Yeah, he keeps talking about that. He's almost <laughs> talking about as, as much as that as he's trying to change his name again. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could do both at the same time. This this, this could be your video series, Clay. A uh -huh. road trip. Where, where does Bill, where's Bill at? Do you know? Where you at? Indiana? Bill? Bill's in Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. So from Dallas to Indiana. In every state, he changes his. I was just going to say that. State, it's called uh, Clay's Crazy Name Change in State. <laughs> I like it. And I can do one out to West to see Sky. All, everybody on the deal, I can just travel around the U.S. and like. You just, just change your name. <laughs> change my name. Confuse change people. Well, that would be funny. So <laughs> is Blue Yeti the same as the. What sloth? Sloth. Your name is Jamie, right? Is that right? Is that the same as the Blue Snowball? Or is that different? Two different brands. Two different. Uh, the Snowball, I believe, is from um, Blue. Okay. And then the oh. Yeti. And then the Yeti is the bigger one. The Yeti's more expensive. Okay. I've never had any experience with the Blue. I mean, sorry, the uh, the Snowball. Um, I really don't know if I like that name, but <laughs> Snowball. Right. But. I think of like throwing snowballs when I hear people say yeah. snowball, but I love the Yeti. It's same thing with the Yeti. I mean, it's not even white. It's just, it's black and it's called the Yeti. So I don't know where they come up with the names, but uh, I love it because plug and play and you can hear like, if I, if I pull it close, you can hear nice, how uh, nice and crisp it is. It's really good for a, a podcast. The only thing I need is the little puffer thing that goes on top and it'll come in even crisper. Uh, I mean, there's even better ways you can actually dial this thing down better. Um, but I mean, there's different sentences on this too. So, okay. Because I wrote them both down and I'm reading the comments. Yeah. Hey, that's your name. Sorry. I knew it was a J name. Yeah. Okay. Blue snowball yeah. is the cheaper version. So I'll look at Yeti. I'll go on and order that this week. I'm and, uh, all in. He says, I'm looking into the same camera I have in the Yeti. Get that combination that you found for one ninety nine. That's, that's the best, one of the best cameras out there. Video cam webcams. And definitely one of the best mics. A lot of podcasters uh, use my, this mic too. All right, let me um, let me get this question from uh, my Francie finds. She says, "What about watches? I heard high, higher end watches are doing good on eBay." And I just saw a video within the past week from Craigslist Hunter 
And actually, this was the topic he was talking about, is how amazing watches are doing on eBay. And he wasn't even talking about the higher end. I mean, of course, the higher end will do great, but like that mid-tier, the you know, the thirty to sixty, seventy dollar watches, the sell through rates on them are crazy. And um, you know, go go to his channel sometime and, and check out that video. But basically, you can find these watches, and a lot of them are vintage at garage sales for a couple bucks. Sometimes at thrift stores, and they're just a really sweet spot. Like he had a whole video about it. Yeah, you can find you can go anywhere and find a lot of citizens. Citizen <laughs> Eco Drive, those ones sell pretty well. Um, the one, but I will tell you a good story because a few years ago, uh, I was, I was even, I wasn't even doing eBay anymore. I was done with eBay. I was probably like 2018. I was with my ex girlfriend, and they, her sister got me a little bit more into reselling again, even though I wasn't selling anything. And I went to a yard, uh, a thrift store, and they had this Movado. And I know exactly what a Movado looks like, the real ones and everything. And I grabbed it. It did not tick. I'm like, okay, this may need just a battery. If it's just a battery for two dollars. On a two hundred dollar Movado with the with the uh, the classic black uh, face with the diamond on it, um, and so I went. I looked behind it, said Movado. So I brought it to a, a watchsmith in the mall. I said, "Hey, if how much would it be to swap out this battery?" And they told me they swapped out the battery. Sure enough, the thing worked. Uh, I never sold it because I think I lost it. I don't know where I lost it because mm -hmm. last week I was still thinking about that that Movado watch. Um, so that was a good bit of money that went down the toilet. Actually, it was two dollars, but I could have made. But uh, about six months ago, I started getting into the um, pocket watches, the vintage, like eighteen, early nineteen hundred pocket watches. So I learned some things about that. Uh, those parts on those, even if you buy them for parts, the parts go for good money. Um, and it's does it only it didn't take me that long to learn about that subject. Maybe about two three hours to learn. Maybe. To retain maybe fifty percent of that subject, um, so because I'm weird, I like to learn different things. Right, that looked pretty cool. Um, so, you, how, how did you learn it? Search and solds or YouTube videos or how did search you and solds? No YouTube videos, just search and solds and Google forums on Google. Like like, there's some dedication to them. Uh, some of the 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 original sites uh, like Waltham or Thomas Seth Thomas. They'll have some sites, some like uh, dedicated people sites that will give you like model numbers and everything like that and the year they were made uh, and how many, um, what's it called? Uh, it's not ticks. There's a certain amount of, oh, that's, in, that's in the Jules, stuff. It's jewels, right? Jewels. jewels, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So you could, if you learn all that stuff, you could probably learn a lot about those type of vintage uh, pocket watches in like three hours. If you if you know what you're doing when you when you're researching stuff. All right. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Entrepreneur Girl. Uh, definitely reach out to you. We'll, we'll see if we can bring you on maybe next Thursday. Uh, yeah, she's a world full of knowledge too. She is amazing. So enjoy the movie. So um, I also see Francie here. If you see her comment, um, she's talking to her boss who has three higher end watches said she'll list them and take uh, for the list fee and 20%. So all I have to say on that, that's a good deal. Um, to yeah. me, the percent you might want to do different, but make yeah. sure like before you take, you give them the money, take out your part for the taxes. If that makes sense. You know, like if it sells for a hundred dollars, I'm setting aside like a third for, for taxes. Maybe that's too much, but that's what I do with my driving Uber part-time. So to me, it would be like, you take the 33 out and then it's the 67 and that's what you would split. Maybe y'all can, you say otherwise, but you got to make sure you pay, you're paying the taxes, Francie. Not even that. Make sure you get feedback before you give him any money. Don't even tell him you sold it until you get positive feedback because- okay. What's going to happen is you give money. They want money. They want they want their uh, their money back, or they it doesn't work. Oh. You're screwed. So always and always make it. Let them know ahead of time. They'll they'll understand. Like I I still do this with my um my ex girlfriend's sister. Like I because they have a lot of clothes that I grab from them and I list for them. Um, and so I they know they like Kevin. Just take like fifty percent of everything or even more than that, and just let us know when they sell. We trust you and get feedback because they're resellers too more on Poshmark, 
but they understand what goes on with eBay. So, um, and another thing is 20% is way too low. Like this is, this. You, yeah. just think of, this goes back to how much do you want to make per hour? And yeah. if you're making $2, two out of every $10 <laughs> per hour off of that, it's not enough for you. Like Bill Stoner said, at least, at least 45%. Me, I say 75%. Because I have a lot of inventory, I can just go out and just relay and enlist myself. I don't need anybody else's inventory. But if it's going to be a nice item that I think is going to sell quickly and for good money, like these watches could be, I say for me, 75%. Um, and I don't even tell them. I don't even tell them until again after I get the positive feedback. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basically, that, that's a consignment model. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't do anything less than 40, 50, you know, up to Kevin, 75%, but definitely not 20. I wouldn't go below 40 myself. And then it kind of depends on, you know, looking at the solds, what's the sell through rate, what, how much money you're going to make. But like Kevin said, don't, don't say anything until that feedback's there or the return window has closed to make sure it's a done deal. And then another thing is um, you could always do this. Say, Hey, listen, how much do you want for them? Do your research on how much you can, you think you can get for those and say, you know what? It may be easier if I just buy these out from you. How much do you want for them? Buy them out for them. And then just, and then that way you don't have to worry. Cause remember it's friends and family, right? Or your coworkers. It, it, it can cause a huge sore. So it can go sour real south of your relationships when you are consigned stuff for them, because they may think, Oh, well, it's good. It should be. So why is it selling? Why isn't it selling? Then you have people bugging the crap out of you. And that's the last stress you need to say, why isn't this selling? So then you start cutting the price down and cutting the price down where you're basically not making nothing. You're trying to get it out of there just yeah. so you stop hearing them, you know, uh, asking about it. So I, sometimes if it's up to me, I would just buy them out, find a good price between you guys, buy them out, give them the money and then just list the item and be done with it. Um, because you never know how long that item's going to sell either. Yeah. Like the only stuff like I've, I've talked about here is, the, you know, bad thing about dad's divorce, but I've ended up with some stuff that he's letting me sell that neither of them wanted. So I get to keep that money. And then my cousin that Brian knows, um, she's given me things um, and I've sold some of those. So it's like, yeah, take out the, the taxes and give her, you know, like 50, 55% or whatever. Yeah. So she's, she's trying to help me get this started or whatever. And she was like my sister. And then there's a guy at school that Brian knows, real tall guy, behavior guy, you know, and he's in my room and he's, he gets these Nikes. He used to coach and like he, he was like, showed me his phone. He's like, oh, look, and it's Jermaine O'Neal. He knows all these people. So oh, he, yeah, India Pacers. Yeah. He, years, and then he the Celtics. Guys, college and pro and guys that played college. So he was like, hey. And, and I got to look him up. He was like, how much can I get for these Jordans like last year? So I need to look him up. And we've talked about like um, doing like a percentage. And before I say yes, I'm going to like look up and be like, well, what else do you have? Because he's like the guy that keeps it as a kid, say clean and has all these boxes and hundreds of a couple hundred pairs of Jordans maybe. So then I told him, I was like, sure, we could do that. And if I get back into running, just, you know, he can get me some of those like vapor, vapor fly 4% that are like 250, you know, I'll be like, let's work it that way. Yeah. And you I'm, can always barter I'm, like that. There's nothing wrong with bartering. Yeah. Um, I mean, my cousin, speaking about Nike shoes, my cousin, she still has her, her Jordans from like the earth. Cause she's a huge shoe collector. So she still has like the Jordans and the Nikes from like the early, like maybe like late eighties, early nineties. Awesome. I mean, she has it all in her closet, especially hats, like vintage hats, hundreds and hundreds of hats and shoes. It's crazy that she's, that's what she's been collecting since she was a kid. And she still collects those things. So like LeBron James shoes, all those expensive shoes, original Allen Iverson shoes from like 95, 96. That's cool. Um, I mean, so she's got a treasure chest of coats. She's always asked me how much they get these. I'm like, unlimited seriously it's what somebody what it means to somebody honestly and that rare of a shoe it's going to mean a lot to somebody and there is those so many collectors out there that was paid stupid money for jordans or nikes that's true um speaking of that my, my knock my nike unit man uh, i've sold probably that'll be on my what sold video 
uh, probably five, six, seven pair of shoes this week, and a lot of it's new dead stock. Like I found a pair of shoes, and they were I wish, I wish they were Jordans. That'd be amazing, but, but these are lesser known Nikes, but they're new dead stock. Like some of them were from '93. You see the the tag on the inside of the box. Oh yeah, that's sick. And they're just selling bit by bit. Which, which remember, yeah, go ahead. Remember, with the boxes, you're gonna get primo money for it. Mm -hmm. Premium money for the bot with the boxes. And I got a question out there because because Clay and I were talking. Um, I like storage units, but I also like cherry picking. And that last storage unit has so much stuff, and, and it, it was good money. It's good money. It's still coming in. But man, it just kind of killed me listing this clothing for three or four weeks. I'm just not crazy about clothing in that quantity. Um, so if anybody out there is into, if you like selling clothing and you'd be interested in maybe some wholesale um, clothing, <laughs> comment below and let, let me know. And I might do it. Nice. This is, a, this, is, this is my third thing I sold tonight on here. Uh, this is a bundle from this one guy I've been talking to since last night. I finally was able to, to cancel my thing because I guess I wasn't able to, was able to buy it. So I just uh, relisted it and he actually came back and bought uh, a $25. I have a, uh, what is it? Burberry liner with the, with the Novacek plaid with non, like a bunch of moth holes, right? And I just sold it for $25. And then I also sold him yesterday, last night, a pair of Zanella pants. And this is going to be a package going to him out in Seattle. Um, so that's good. So I've sold three things tonight since I've been on this chat. You know why? You know why it is? Because Bill's in the chat. So, Bill, you're not in here. So I'm taking your sales. <laughs> if he's still in the chat. Yeah, the Zanella pants. Like, I, I, that was another category I learned. It was pretty easy to learn, kind of like what you did. Spent only probably 45 minutes to an hour researching it. And out here, for some reason, uh, pants, especially men's pants, they don't get touched much from the thrift store. So I went through like on a 99 cent tag day, and I went to 10 stores in this one thrift store chain. And I, Clay saw the picture. I just loaded up the back of the Prius and. You know, Zanella pants, Ralph Lauren, um, just some high quality, quality pants and going for a buck, you know, selling them 25, 35, $45. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Cause it's, that is probably the most underrated rack to look through is the men's, uh, dress pants. And I've been, that's always been one of my bread and butter items since I was, since I, when I was reselling, uh, when I was younger, um, so like if you go back to my older videos before I left, a lot of those have Zanellas or different high-end fashion uh, uh, men's dress slacks. One of the most under – and they, don't get me wrong. They, they're they long-tail items. Yeah. Like you said, you pick them up for super cheap. And you, what you look for first is the name brand, the fabric, which is hugely important. So like mm -hmm. wool fabrics obviously be worth more than cotton. Uh, and then also uh, size sells too, you know. Um, but – one of the most underrated items for me is dress pants. Yeah, I, I agree with all that 100%. And it, it doesn't take long to study the solds on those. Because like nope. there's only a few brands, really. There's only maybe a dozen brands to really look for. And yeah. that you able to come across to make you really good money on dress slacks. Yeah, um, looking for the country. The made in Italy is a big sign. Yep, that works. Definitely. Wool, cashmere. Yep. It's good stuff. They, now, now they are a little bit long, longer tail. That's for sure. But, yeah. Well, some of them, some of them with certain patterns and certain fabrics will go quick. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Zanella Laura Pianas, they'll go quick, uh, and they'll go for probably, I want to say one third of the price more than regular Zanellas. Uh, Zanella Platinum is another one. Zanella Platinum with Laura Piana is like a bolo item. Um, those will go for probably double the price of a regular Zanella. Uh, if you get some with the super 120s wool or super, some of them have super 180s wool. That's about an e an easy hundred hundred and fifty dollar item there, uh, that are Laura Piana with Zanella fabric on it. Um, I mean, I, again, I, it's just I, I can talk about this stuff all night long because that's like my bread and butters right there. Um, but I do come across a lot of Zanellas, and they uh, this time around they seem to be sitting a little longer, and and I, I get a little less premium than I did before. Yeah. So. Uh, but I still grab them all day long. 
Nice, nice. Uh, Las Vegas Thrift says, I'm glad people sleep on Hawaiian, Hawaii Island style brands. Yeah. The Rain Spooners. Uh, oh, man. Uh, Tori Richards. Those are one of the first items I started with was Hawaiian, Hawaiian uh, shirts. And uh, I love Rain Spooner, though. If you can get one of those like Pixar, Disney Pixar patterns, yeah. they go for really good money, like 50, 60 bucks, or like the baseball, basketball, sport theme ones that are from Rain Spooner. Oh. Uh, those will go for good money. Um, and there's so many brands out there that are, that are really good. Women's, right? Women's stuff. Uh, when it comes to Hawaiian muumuu dresses, uh, we have a one from Hawaii, which is a, it's a long ass name. I have it listed, but those go for nothing less than $200. And right now I have this one listed for 175 because there's a lot a couple stains at the bottom, but it's just beautiful. It's like a piece of artwork from the 1950s Hawaiian dress. Um, so I, I love looking at dresses too. Um, because well, so a lot of people are one way. A lot of women will only do men's clothes or women's clothes. A lot of men is the opposite. They'll do women's clothes or men's clothes. Me, I'll do everything. I'll do men's, women's, vintage, new. It doesn't matter to me. I'll do all clothing. And it's a huge, huge uh, niche to figure out too. But if you take the time and effort and you learn these brands, you know exactly what to sell them for, how much to sell them for, and how long to expect them to stay listed. And yeah, that kind of goes back to, I think, what we were talking about last week, right? You know, spend some time learning a niche. And then once you feel like you've really got a handle on it, then pick up another one and just start stacking them. Yep. I mean, because it can be overwhelming. I can imagine as a new reseller coming in, and like, and like I'm not an expert on the shirt, but some of the things you you guys are, I haven't learned those niches very well. Um, if you try to do everything at once, it'd be overwhelming. But if you just take a niche, learn it, and then slowly start to stack them, then it's very doable. Yeah, uh, Sonny has a good point. Rain Spooner is typical ones. There are dozens of others I don't see others mention because they don't know. Uh, Hilo Hattie is another good one. I know that one. Um, I know just I know a bunch of them, but it's, I can't, it's hard to think at the top of my head uh, on the spot. I'm sure Sonny knows what I'm talking about. I've bought a few Hawaiian shirts like when I'm at the thrift store and I have time to look them up. Yeah. Because I, I, mean, I don't mind if I'm in his thrift store for like – 30, 45 minutes if I get a couple of things, even if it's not going to be worth a, a, you know, a huge, like the whole big per hour. Cause it's like, to me, this is part of my learning. Yeah. You know, pay off, you know, later on. And there's, as I said, there are so many Hawaiian shirts around here. Just, oh my God, every thrift store has, you know, tons of them. Yeah. And then you just, like you said, just, just use your phone. Yeah. That's all I do. And then for me, though, I also know certain stitches from certain eras. So I know if I'm holding a vintage item, whether it's a wine shirt or not, just by looking at the tag, number one, and look at the way that the seams are stitched. Mm. And that comes with knowledge. That comes with a lot of research. Um, and then another thing that's going to help you sell quicker is keywording. That's like a quarter of the most important thing is keywording. If you can get your keywording down, and you can learn these brands and you can learn how much these things sell for. They'll sell quicker and they'll sell for more money. That's good. That's good. Um, <clears throat> okay, guys. I, by the way, uh, one of the playlists I do is I, I do Poshmark, well, also eBay and others, but uh, mostly it's been Poshmark closet reviews. So especially if you're a new seller and you're just not happy with your sales, if you'd like for me to take a look, at your closet, I can do a, a review video. Um, just leave me your your closet name or a link to your closet, the number of active li listings you have, and the number of 30-day self-shares. And I, I can do a video for you. I, I, I filmed one today for Jody, um, the Canadian reseller. Yeah, Matima. Yeah, and I'm planning on dropping that one tomorrow. Um, so if you guys are interested, let me know. And I'll be glad to do that for you. Yeah, and then... Um I want to give a shout out to Wes, been flipping hard goods. We were just talking about him with, uh, he put me on to completely. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, Wes, if you're in the chat, uh, he is in the chat. We were just talking about like cross uh, platform and like those type of, uh, and then also like find and sell through rates on um, items. So we brought you up and, and um, man, we've had almost everybody from the, the reseller reunion on here tonight. We had Tracy, we had Bill, we had Larry. We have Wes. 
That's crazy. Thanks for the support too from all of us. Yeah, when, when is that again? The reseller show right? every Wednesday Eastern, eight PM on my channel. And we're gonna do a mix of bringing new people in, on with us, and learn from them, and they can learn from us. And then, oh, some of us uh, OG people. I just talked to Bonafide Hustler tonight. He's got them some things going on personal in his life, but he's gonna try to get on one of these in the next few weeks. So, and I also talked to if you guys know who Thrift School is, he's got a huge, uh, uh, sorry, a huge. Um, YouTube channel. He wants to get on one of these also with us. So we're bringing a, some of these big channels into our, into our, uh, uh, our hangouts too, to try to get everybody to say, Hey, listen, like we all can come together and have a great time. We all can learn from each other. It's supposed to just going to be just like a chill place, you know? Yeah. I love Bonafide Hustler. He, he, him and Chris, I think they were fun with the first two. Matter of fact, I bought the well, Bonafide Hustler's um, shoe guy when I was first starting. Uh, I, I don't, I think sometimes it's good and to accelerate that learning curve and this was when i was brand new starting and right away i was making money on shoes so uh, yeah he's got some good content i love watching him go garage selling thrifting uh with with his brother that, that, that's a definitely a good channel yeah i um one good perk about that though and have a big facebook group like that is i used to help promote this stuff so i would get all their stuff for free and all their stuff is great Raken's books were great uh, I think Raikens buy it was like the the go to Bible clothing Bible is Raikens 101 best uh, clothing brands to look for. Huh. That to me was is like the the Bible for somebody that's just starting out trying to that wants to read a book. It, it, what how I learned was I literally went through brands just by what was in that book, and I hmm. only stayed on what was there. And then I slowly went out my comfort zone there and started buying different things. Um, but it, it's, uh, my favorite Bonafide book was when he did the, um, the garage, I think it was the bike, one of the garage sale ones, the ones that just like looking at garage sales, that one's from like 2014 or 2015, but that's a good one from Bonafide Hustler. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I bought a couple. Um, yeah, they're definitely good. So I, yeah, I can't wait to see him on there. Um, love you. Love that reseller reunion show. That's really good. Yeah, I just, were you able to watch last week? Because I know sometimes you're able, yeah. you're not able to. Okay. Yeah, I, I, not the whole thing, but I, I was in there for a good chunk of time. <laughs> the whole thing was it was like six hours long. Three, uh, I think it was like two and a half hours before the six hours ended. We finally got the Gilmans on because they were having like huge technical difficulties. Um, but if you do get the chance, listen to the Gilmans on there, and I'll guarantee you will not you will walk away with there learning a lot about retail, uh, not retail, um, private label pallets, um, wholesale, and then also selling on eBay. That's good. I mean, I mean, that's the whole point of this, right? We're looking for those nuggets. Um, content. Yeah. That content, those little nuggets. Yep. All right. And actually, content that's actually good content. That's going to teach you something and, swing you the right way there is some content out there from some some people that is just don't just some places it's, it's don't stay like stay away from like some people like there's a couple of people that are like and Klein's like a bolo item uh you know stuff like that and it's like whoa wait a second no don't do that be careful be careful what you're buying you know mm -hmm. there's certain warrior vanderbilt uh vanderbilt pants that sell well but 99.9% .9 of Gloria Vanderbilt stuff is going to sit and they're not good sellers. But there is a 0.01% uh, pant that Gloria Vanderbilt makes that goes for pretty good money. That's good. All right. Um, so last week we, we were talking about this garage sale challenge that we were going to do, that we're going to do. Um, and you know, we kind of, kind of came up with the guidelines and we decided what we're gonna spend fifty dollars. Yep. At a garage sale, and I, I guess a thrift store would be okay too. Um, if you couldn't, you know, garage sale usually gonna do better than a thrift store. And whoever has the the highest total based on comps is gonna be declared the winner. And I know Dumpster Dauber Dad's also in on this. Scott, yeah. He's already spent some, I think he said, right? Yeah, he spent some of it. Yeah. So um, I'm excited. Tomorrow I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna see if I can if I can bring it. Well, see, yeah, see you guys have that advantage of me. I got I gotta go out on Saturdays because I work tomorrow. 
So now it's almost like not to get too technical, but I'm like going, huh? So if Brian goes out and he buy he spends a whole hundred. Are you going to choose the best fifty dollars in there, Brian? Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> See, in my head, I'm taking $50 on Saturday, and that's all I'm going to spend. That's just because I have a death pile, you know? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I haven't been able to spend anything. It would have been great if my girlfriend got everything on camera last week because we only spent $52 on the stuff. Yeah. That, and we got five vacuums. Yeah. Uh, oh, one of which works all complete, and we'll sell it. It sells in somewhere in the $180 range. We got the five vacuums for 250 each the other ones are like in great shape three of them are hoover one's a bizzle the hoovers are have all their attachments and the directions with them and i just and we and i also picked up a samsung um i, th I think it's like a five or it's a dvd blu-ray player but it's also a receiver and that also has all the speakers for it it's a samsung and those the comps on the dvd receiver alone is like 120 dollars the solds and then the speaker sets with it were going for like two three hundred dollars so she picked that up for like five dollars mm -hmm. i just wish she took the video she did a video on it uh as she was buying it because then that would have counted i'm glad she didn't because yeah, i know you guys are because <laughs> it'd be over like that almost be like yeah i have to go it, out like all weekend and going what's 50 uh we'll see it that. goes to show you it's gonna also show you doing this you're going to look at the comps and the solds more before you pick something up. You're going to look for those home run items. You're going to look for items that are going to make you more profit. Yeah. And you know what that's going to do for you? It's only going to make you better yeah. because you're going to start doing that even more when you go out. Yeah. So when I first started, I was only averaging like $15 a sale when I first started. When I ended and quit, I was averaging $37. Now since I've come back, I don't offer free shipping on anybody, so it's helped me out. I average $67 a sale. And, and so – it's a lot of it's like I'm being picky with my stuff I buy, but I'm finding a lot of the stuff that's that's bolo items, you know. So that's good. knowledge that's, again, knowledge is a big one. And that's why I bought that GoPro camera. I'm mad it didn't come in today. So because I'm like, all right, it's gonna be a little awkward filming <laughs> filming somebody when you're paying for an item. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Um, like the GoPro would be a little less obvious, but yeah, I might do the whole receipt thing or something because I bought a little yeah. receipt book just for myself so if i go to garage sale i can write down and I've, I've been okay like with brian i've learned like you know you just write it even down later that day but i might do that if i feel too awkward like yeah doing this like hey how much will you that's exactly why i bought a gopro because man like when i see cincinnati picker or someone like that going out with the gopros i'm like man it looks so sleek and they don't it's no. just a natural conversation flowing it's not like Oh, how much do you want for this? Huh? Can you get this on? Make sure you're looking at the camera. How much do you want for this? Can I, I'll, I'll give you half, I'll give you five bucks for it. Will you take five? So like, <laughs> and it just, it makes me feel more comfortable when I'm using it. I've noticed it for the first time I used it. Actually, I've used it twice, right. but at the first garage sales, you'll see on my videos, I feel really comfortable and I'm getting some natural conversation going. Like, if you look at my intro on my yard sale, I have the guy going and I, I specifically told my girlfriend, I want this dude on my intro. He right. says, he goes, uh, well, if you want to pay me 30 bucks or he wants $40 for these two big, tall prints, uh, of, oh, yeah. um, the NASCAR, the car, you know, the, the racing cars. Yeah. The racing, the IndyCar yeah. Ones. yeah. Yeah. You talked uh, about it. Yeah. And I, and I said, well, will you take 30? He yeah. What? He said, well, if you get if you take 30, you can go out and come back and I'll give you 40. <laughs> and right. I was like, Whatever, I'll take the 40. But it was the fact that it was a natural conversation. Like we talked about other parts racing. Yeah. And uh, he didn't even notice I even had a GoPro. So, so where do you wear it? I have a strap on my um, backpack. There's a pack a backpack extension. Okay. And I put it I slide it right on there and go out there with it. That was and people who notice it, they don't know that they're live or they're, so they're on, on a backpack. Yeah, it would totally blend in. Yeah, like they're ready, set, backpack. resell, Cincinnati picker. Because I've asked them, like, hey, what do you guys use? Is that is that a strap on your on your shoulder? And a lot, a lot of Josh, they all use the same thing. Because I was like, I don't know if they're using it on the chest because it's a little hard to tell, but they use it up here because you're able to be more face to face to the person. Yeah, instead of down here only getting like neck and under. Um, but yeah, it was. Right. 
I've seen, yeah, the one here. I saw one that was like a shoulder mount, but that looked like you're like a... Yeah, I get the backpack one right here. And you can adjust it. You can bring it up. You can even bring it on your shoulder and put it up if you want to. Yeah. Uh, but, man, that guy, I'm in love with that GoPro. It's awesome. And it's so much easier because when we did our estate sale one that we haven't even gone into doing yet, uh, and that was from like weeks ago, we're literally like sneaking around trying to get like video of the yeah. state bill and trying to get this where sh my hands are shaking the camera's shaking and it was it was so goofy and funny but um hey listen if you have your phone that if that works that works for you man if you feel more comfortable doing that until you can get a, a, a gopro gopros are pretty expensive and the yeah. one i got was like 480. yeah i just uh -huh. yeah, shelling out for this and I only own like a fourth of it. I got it the other day. So I'm like, crap. You probably did just get a phone, huh? Yeah. Got the you get? whatever. You'll like this. Some of the kids today, I just was holding it or whatever. And they make fun of my, here's my old uh, SE, yeah. you know, small one. And then they were like going, mister, are you flexing on us? And I'm like, that means like showing off, right? And I'm like, yeah. no. Yeah. no, I was like, I have a phone. This is what I have. Like, if LeBron has the house the size of the school, good for him. I was like, no, I'm not showing off. It's just a new phone for the next like five years. Yeah. What'd you I get? For eBay. I don't tell them I have another YouTube because they wouldn't care about resale, but they troll you. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine the comments they would say. On my other channel I had in the fall that I took down, it was a bunch of the students watch. And I kind of that was part of the audience, the idea, but yeah, story there, but you know, I had some wacky, weird videos, you know, but uh, and some would troll or whatever, but most were nice. And they keep asking, Are you gonna do another? And I'm like, Next summer, next summer, yeah. I'll Did throw you... back up the random the videos Brian seen Larry, you know, and stuff. Uh, what phone did you get? Uh, iPhone 11, just the basic 11, because it's I watched a bunch of videos and talked to some people at the store, and they're like, For the extra $300. Yeah, they were like to the pro, they're like the camera's almost the same and the video camera's the same. I wanted kind of the next one just because this is giant compared to you know, the yeah, old dude, that's, that's crazy big. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. what I have. I have the Note 11 or the Note 10. Yeah, so um, I love it. Yeah, so I'm good for like hopefully three, four, five years. Yeah, flip and sloth. Uh, I need to upgrade to the GoPro 8 and my see which is trash and go on the GoPro 5. So I, there's a, if you look up like YouTube GoPro eight versus like seven, some people have like GoPro six versus seven versus eight. And you can see the big differences between the six and the seven. It's not as big as between the seven to eight, but the eight has that super smooth too, where it's just, it's so smooth. Like I could be walking up and down and it's just smooth as hell. Well, that's the thing. I, I just bought the. I just ordered it. I was hoping it was going to come in today. I got oh, the eight. Nice. I got the eight on eBay with the accessory kit, like the chest straps and some other pieces, for like three eighty eight on eBay. It's yep. supposed to be delivered tomorrow because you know, kind of tying it back into the YouTube channel. I'm like, well, I'm trying to get where I can go have five or six days where videos are being uploaded. So I'm thinking playlist. I'm like a sourcing playlist list is a no brainer. Yeah. But I've tried it with my phones and kind of like what you were saying, that you know, I'm gonna have it up here and can you <coughs> feel that's just really awkward. Like, like with that GoPro, and I've seen like Craigslist Hunter and a lot of the other guys you mentioned, and that's just natural, you know. And you can even pull up your phone and record it, you know, get it in the screen while while you're pulling up up comps or whatnot, and those interactions should be yeah. smooth. So that's gonna be another playlist of uh, sourcing. I also like doing with the, I, I got the Joby. Uh, I don't know where, oh, I think it's out in the living room. I got the Joby. I think I showed you all this a couple days last week or sometime. I showed somebody all my gear, but I got the Joby with the uh, the legs at the bottom. And it was like, a, it was like $75. It was like $125. It's the aluminum one with the better legs instead of the plastic one where the legs can fall off. And this one is super lightweight. It is so sick because you can do like, you can do selfie with it. And uh, you can you can wrap it around trees if you want, or branches, or rails, and yeah. But for me, I liked it because when I I'm in the middle of doing um the edit, she's editing the Goodwill bins we did a couple weeks ago, and my my introduction, I'm actually going up to the camera. My camera's on the ground, and I walk up to it. I'm up top, and like you know, here I'm at Goodwill bins. Come see what I get. Uh, let's go see what I can get. You know, and I walk out. So something different. It's not the same thing where I'm up in front of a camera. 
Yeah. I do, I do different things. Maybe it'll, yeah. it'll work with people, may not, but uh, it, it may connect with people. And it's not the same as what you see in Craigslist Hunter uh, uh, or um, uh, Cincinnati Picker. It's different. It's not the, fa the regular face to face. The way my angles are different. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. And, and I think that's the thing. Like, you know, like with my closet reviews, it's mostly the screen with me in the corner. A lot, a lot of the things are just on the computer screen. Uh, so to have 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 a different type of playlist where you're out and about in those different angles and interacting, you know, I think would be good. Yeah. I don't know if you can see, but is this is this what you got, Brian? That's what you got, right? With all those accessories. Yeah, that looks like it. Yep. Yep. Three fifty. I was thinking yeah. about it, but what I did was I I bought the ones with the two extra batteries because the batteries drain super quick. Okay. I suggest first thing you do is buy batteries. Okay. Uh, and then also get another memory card. It makes sure you do your research on the memory cards. Okay. Because it also helps with the quality of the video coming out. Okay. Uh, how, how long does that battery last on it? If you are all time the whole time, maybe like hour, hour and a half. It okay. runs out quick. And if it, for me, if I'm constantly having it on, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's going to drain quick. All right. So I definitely need to get on that then. Yeah, even Scott said extra batteries, yes. Okay, I'm looking, scrolling on eBay here a little, yeah. And do you just plug it into the the laptop and it's pretty easy to, like, down whatever, download the footage and then you put it in your iMovie? Yes, you can, you take the, so what happens is it's a different US, uh, SD card than your regular SD card, right? It's different. Oh, the card. Um, yeah, so what you do is you take that, um, and then you plug it into your computer because it's going to give you a slot for the regular SD. Card. Oh, I like these. Yeah, it looks like Jedi mind trick there. Yeah, so um, the flip and slot says uh, film in 1080 60 versus 4K. Otherwise, it'll take four hours to, to, to I guess, to upload. Oh, okay. So that, that that's I guess that's that's a good tip. So it's good to have the 4K, but yeah, not really easy to use it. Yeah, well, I guess because of the quality of the video, it's just gonna take take it longer. Yeah. But um, yeah, hopefully, well, I mean, we'll be here tomorrow, sort of thing. But I should be able to get it up and running by next week. Yeah, I guess I thought maybe you'd ordered it off. <laughs> oh. He's been talking the whole time. I wonder if he has. Or is it just... Yeah, is it delayed? And hey, 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 Kevin, quit throwing those gang signs, man. Come on. It does look like that. We should get like a... If there's a way to get like a... Should I... Do I have my snippet tool here on the screen? Snippet. Well, Clay, well, I guess while Kevin's trying to figure that out, out, out his... Um, here he goes. I think he's about it. It was strange. I don't know what happened to my my. I got full bars and the guy I got kicked off. That's strange. Yeah, it was where it looked like you were throwing gang signs the way your uh, your mm -hmm. hand throws. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've read that comment. Flip and sloth, a hundred percent correct. Don't do the four K. Do ten eighty. Oh, there he goes again. Now it looked like shooting a free throw. It, oh, it did. Yeah, 60? good. Pretty good follow through. Be but with bad form. Can you see me now? Yeah. Well, okay. I hear you. But like I was saying, can you see me? Yeah, a little, a little choppy. That's so strange. Right, like it says I have full bars here and everything. I'm right next to my router. You're good now. Yeah, you're good okay. Now. So like Sloth is saying, 1080, 1080, 60, shoot in that all day long. Um, and don't sh shoot in, I think it's linear mode. So you don't have that distortion look. Like if you watch Cincinnati Picker, uh, picture, uh, Cincinnati Picker, he's got like this distorted look. Uh, it's it's because it's he has it in like the regular wide angle view. Do it in linear. Linear will mean it'll come in like where we are right now. That's good. I'm, I'm glad we talked about this. It's linear, good. yeah. Good info. Yeah, yeah. Get it once, and then I can ask again whenever I get one. Yeah, definitely. And always YouTube. YouTube's your friend. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. GoPro eight settings. 
And, and the good thing, like I was, I was kind of debating it because I'm trying to get a little bit leaner because, man, I just buy a lot of stuff. But I was like, well, I mean, if I'm be serious about YouTube and it is, you, know, you can write it off because it'll be just for basically YouTube. It's a business expense. Uh, yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm doing the same thing with my cell phones from last year. Uh, that's when I did right. Do my taxes here the next few weeks. Um, because I'm going to probably owe a good amount for my regular job. And then half of half of what I made last year, I put back into inventory. So that should be fine with taxes on eBay. Plus I have all the receipts I saved from last year. Nice. Um, and then I bought the two cell phones, you know, my girlfriend's and mine. So, uh, those are some big purchases. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, I also got a phone. I got the oh, I got the the Galaxy 10 Plus, and you know it's honestly I probably use it 70 percent for work. Like it's funny. I used to spend my spare time on like social media or, or you know watching TV, and now my spare time is reselling or YouTube. I'm telling you, it's mo it's money. I always tell people, I love making money. So whether it's at work or not at work. My motivation is exactly like me being on here with you guys, like you just said, watching YouTube videos. What distracts me is social media or watching TV, and it's not reselling related. Yeah. I mean, and it is good to have a little bit of that, but I mean, oh, like, definitely. But the percentage is just now it's like I'm intentionally watching something versus just mindlessly killing time. Yeah. And these are fun too, man. You get to learn a lot on, on these hangouts with people. Yeah. Well, that's partly why maybe I've said this. I want to get ideally this summer, if I can afford it, a two bedroom or something, because my workspace is my living room. And I grew up, I admit it's like TV is my best friend at times. It was as a kid at rough times. So it's like, I can't help but want to watch something, but then that'll slow down listing and everything. So it's like, I want to have a sec, uh, you know, even if there, it's a small bedroom like mine is, put all the work stuff in there, you know, just listen to like a podcast or put YouTube on in the background so that I'm not as distracted. Yeah, that works too. All right. Um, I think, Clay, you, you brought this one up or, um, okay. earlier today. We're talking about inventory systems. Oh, yeah. Um, like the way I do it, you know, I, I've got I've got like three rows of shelves in my in my garage. And each of them holds like eight bins, the, the bigger plastic bins, and they're numbered, you know, A1 through, I think I'm on like 63. Uh, list them, put them in a plastic bag, and put them in there. And then when they sell, I ship them out. And I like that because, you know, it takes less space. But I know Clay prefers the list it, box it, box it method. Um, yeah. What does everyone think about that? What, what do you guys out in the out, out in the chat? How do you do your inventory? And Clay, you want to talk maybe about why you do yours? Which so when I started finally listing in November, I got to and then yeah, and then I hit a couple of more garage sales I shouldn't have. But I talked to this guy who also resells part time. It's his retirement job, and he was like, "Yeah, I list." I, and I pack as I list. He's like in my garage. That, that way everything is, it's already done. So that just clicked with me. So ever since then, I don't necessarily pack all the shoes because I have shoe boxes. But um, I like to just, like I say, get the right uh, measurements and everything in the listing on eBay. And then I also will write it on the box. So whenever it's time to mail it, once I grab it, I've labeled it on the end. I can pull the box, take a picture of that because I do all my labels at school um, right now. But I'm going to steal an idea that Rally Roots, Callie, stole from some videos she watched where she made a wall. Now, they have all that room at the Rally Ranch, but it's like all the USPS shoe boxes. And she taped one in, the, the part against the wall, and she just left them open. And on the flap, she labeled it. So, like, one row is, like, A, I guess, B, C, D. So they're storing the shoes in this wall of boxes. Then they take it out and put it in another shoe box. But I'm thinking about doing that at home or in the storage unit I got. But it just makes my brain, it's the opposite of Brian. It just keeps my brain, you know, like calmer if it's already packed up. And all I have to do is get it out and I might remeasure or something. But, you know, then just print the label and go. Well, and here, here's my only pushback on that. 
And of course, everybody's got to do what works for them, but it takes up more space. Yeah. And if you already are, already have limited space, well, then it's just kind of compounding the problem. But yeah. But other than that, I know Bonafide Hustler. That's why he does it. Like he boxes everything up, and he has a, a wall. Yeah. On the video, so I mean, I know I know some people do that. And the person you were talking about, I, I can't remember the name, but there's some girl. Like I, I started watching her a couple of years ago. She's on Poshmark's. Uh, I want to say like Selena or something. Like a real girly girl, and, and like she she introduced that that shoebox shelving system about two years ago. I, I just can't think of her channel name. So I really don't watch her anymore. It's one of those I first started watching, and, you know, kind of outgrew it. She was a little too much into the, the glitz and glam for me. Yeah. What do you do, Kevin? My girlfriend does it. Uh, okay. And do you have <laughs> box as you sell? No, no. We put, we have bins, uh, and then we, 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 um, we name them like men's clothes, women's clothes, listed, not listed. And then we put them in there. We kind of put jeans into jeans. We put uh, shirts with shirts, jackets with jackets, and break them down by men's and women's and listed and not listed. And then all my blazers and suit jackets I have, I just have hanging up. And then in the bins, do you put them in poly bags or anything? Or do you no, just nothing? Them? Not until that's ready to be shipped out. Okay. So you can just still find it by looking at the picture and looking at the. Yeah. Just okay. knowing exactly what I sold, and for the most part, I know where almost everything is is just by my brain seeing where it goes. And you just have it all there in the apartment. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything's my apartment. Yeah, yeah, all I have 550 items listed. Probably another like 400, 100, maybe even more than that. That's not even listed. Okay, just like uh, y'all have just a separate room you're using for yeah. that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so. The ones that aren't listed are like in my daughter's closet and okay. in the and, and in the uh, living room being ready to be pictured. And the ones that are listed are in my, my boys' rooms in their closet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like seeing all the comments from everyone, um, how everybody does their inventory. Yeah, I'm in the minority. It's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, well, it's their name like I do, huh? Huh? No, no. <laughs> it's also much easier to say it is pre boxed and labeled. Or if, if somebody, like if you miss the measurements or somebody wants a certain picture, I mean, if it's already boxed up, you have to open it up, take it out, you know. So you guess you got to think about that. I only tape like when I'm doing it, I usually only do like one. Um, it depends. Like if there's room to leave it open somewhat, I'll just loosely tape it or even just do one strike down, you know, cause I'm probably an over taper, I guess out of paranoia, you know, but, um, I sense a uh, YouTube name. Uh, another over, one. Yeah. The over taper pen. No bad. The over taper. Um, I'll incorporate that somehow. I'll make a video about over tape. Uh, probably we'll Bill stoners, um, death, death warehouse. Oh yeah, I'd love to have that inventory though. <coughs> Telling you, I need to get a road trip up there. Yeah, and addicted to the hustle. I mean, that's a good point, right? That's it's a perfect example of why we do what we do, right? How we all do things differently is helpful. It's how we get better together. The whole collaborative nature of this, you know, picking each other's brains, um, and, and just learning and, and finding out what for us. And, and I think going back to YouTube, that I mean, that that's the whole deal about YouTube. Like the kids, you know, Clay and I both teach and they spend the majority of their time on, on these and, and they don't watch, you know, the TV we grew up on. Yeah. And I think it's this is the type of reasons. Well, not necessarily reselling for them all, but just the how you can collaborate. It's really cool. Yeah, Las Vegas threat to send your your rebel clay. I'm a rebel. Yeah, he is. Doing what I can. <laughs> there, there could be a, a name, too. Okay. Hey, guys, if, if y'all are in the chat, y'all got any questions, go ahead and fire them out to us. I don't yeah, have. I got to get off here soon because I promised my girl I'd be, uh, I'd have an early night tonight because the last three nights I've been up late doing hangouts. Yeah. And uh, last night, I think I got off at like 11. And uh, I still was talking to Dumpster Diver Dad on a private chat. 
Yeah, I don't know. How you do it. I don't know. Well, I, like I told you, I took a nap. I've been taking naps right after I get home, maybe for an hour before I, I go on any live. So um, just catching up some, on some sleep. But tomorrow's Friday, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. Last day of work. It's awesome. So I took the yeah. day off. Um, yeah. And, and, and I think that maybe that's our last topic is the same thing. Like my wife is downstairs and, you know, balancing this reselling YouTube and personal life. You got to be careful, even though it's good, but it can't consume you. You don't want to. You know, and once again, this is another topic Chris Taylor Thumb talks about is, you know, you got what good is it to build an empire if everyone's, if you don't know the people you're building them with and you lose yeah. those relationships. So you got to balance it. Yeah, for sure. Sloth needs a girlfriend. Can, can, can you source one of those? That's awesome. I need a girlfriend like Kevin's. Right? <laughs> I know. I'm very lucky. I told uh, you. Like, I asked a few weeks ago, and she has a sister, but compared to me, she's like could be my daughter. She's like a child. Clay so. Clay goes. Um, I need a girl. I need to get a girl like Kevin's because you helped me out so much. And congratulations, Ashley. Some way or another, she says I just figured out the video. It's not deleted. I just uploaded to YouTube. So that's hey. great. So I'll probably do a premiere tomorrow or the day or, or on Friday. Hey, and, and Sloth, Brian and I, this past summer when we were out um, sourcing, we actually joked about, should I look for a mail order bride from like Russia, you know? So. This is play talking. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, for me, not for Brian. Well, we were talking about Brian, not for Brian, for me. I don't know if you can find one at a garage sale. Yeah. My fancy finds. Nice job on the Yamamoto. That's a really good find. How, how much How much is it worth, Francie? It's a lot. Any Yamamoto is a lot. Is that like what you were showing us, like the kimonos or the... No, the no, no. I, I'm pretty, that's a fashion brand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know enough about clothing, to be honest. Yeah. I'm going to see how much... She can get. She says a sweater. Hey, good night. Addicted to hustle. Yeah, I mean, look, these things are going for dumb money. What kind of uh, what? Which kind of sweater is it, uh, Francie? Uh, is it like a furry one? Is it one of those cool kinds? Because I mean, look at this. These all are going for like a hundred to three hundred, four hundred dollars and up. These yeah. Yamamoto's. Is it one of the cool designs that they have? Pull it up. Pull up uh, Yamamoto and screen share it. Kensai Yamamoto. That is amazing. <coughs> what was that? That noise. Oh, sorry, my computer. Yeah. You got a Russian uh, future bride on, on another. Yeah, thing. yeah. I, I, I went to yeah uh, RussianWomenForAmericanMen.com. There you go. You know exactly where the website is too. It probably right. is a site. <laughs> He's gonna be a spokesperson. Here's your first sponsorship. Yeah, right. I go for bad Russian accent, but... Yeah, I'd like to find a sick sweater. Dang, that, that's the thing. There's just so many things to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, for what I'll tell you is a good tip. Once you see something and it looks like it's not normal, it's out of ordinary. There's a 80% chance. It's a good find. Mm. And one other thing I do is I'll go up and before I even look through anything, I will go up and down the clothing racks and I'll just put my, my finger, rub my fingers right along the edges of each, 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 uh, each piece of my item. And if I feel like it may be a cashmere or something silky or something different, that's not the same. I'll look at it and grab it. I've made so much money just doing that before I even go in and start looking at all every single item. She paid yeah, one dollar for it. That's sick. That's crazy. Yeah, even the pants we're talking about the men's pants. You can like I, what you said. I, I got to the point at first when I first started, I was looking at every label, but after a while, it's like what you said. You could just feel when you touch them. Yeah, or the the Zanella pants. You can just look at the bit waistbands. They have that Zanella waistband on there this it's it's like nothing else you can easily easily 
excuse me, you can easily recognize it just by the waistband. Yeah. That's, good. That's cool though. Good for good for Francie. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Let us know when you sell it how much it goes for. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Flipping slot, slot. Kevin's a weird closed fingerer. Yes, I am. I like to go up and down the aisles and feel. Yeah, these are those fingers. <clears throat> All right. All right. Anybody, anybody got anything else? All right. All right, guys. Well, appreciate stopping on. Um, I know next week, I think Bill mentioned an entrepreneur girl and anyone else in chat, if you'd like to be on, um, yeah, like join us on a Thursday night chat. We'd love to have you. Yeah. So just, uh, just message me, uh, maybe give me your email and we'll get that information and try to set that up. Yeah. We can Definitely. fit more squares in. Yep. I'll probably be back live with Brian down in Waxahachie next week. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I like coming on here. I like that uh, we've been able to get some more people in here for you and yeah. uh, do a little community thing for you guys, you know? Yeah. That's we what it's all about. We appreciate it, Kevin, for sure. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Right, would... Well, it's been fun. Um, happy sourcing this weekend, everybody. I know I'm going out sourcing tomorrow. It's been a $50. Hopefully, uh, bring home the gold. And, uh, yeah. So good sourcing this weekend. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. Yeah, bye. Peace.